put this is the output of the uh, uh, AT tiny 5 volts uh, PWM PWM is proportional to the um, amplitude of the, the audio signal. And this is a uh, stereo too as well. So this is using both channels and uh, uh, it's sampling at approximately um, 37 kilohertz and uh, the PWM output put is at uh, 30 32.5 kilohertz. And this is just made to uh, adapt onto this L298 driver. I'm using that for the uh, H bridge, even though I'm not running, uh, I'm only actually running about uh, half of the bridge. Describe the operation uh, of the uh, AT Tiny 85 uh, Class D amplifier. Uh, basically, it's um, a stereo input, and I'm just going to go ahead and draw a wave here, and this will go ahead and signify our um, our input to the uh, AT Tiny 85, and this is fed into the uh, analog to digital converter, the a ADC. Uh, the ADC is set to uh, have a reference voltage of 1.1 volts, so. <coughs> Um, basically on the circuit there's a bias resistor divider network that biases the uh, input signal uh, approximately 0.55 volts and that's done with a uh, 4.7k resistor and I think a 560 it might be a 530 as well in any case uh, it takes the signal and bumps it up uh, 0.55 volts. So this center line here, we're going to go ahead and call it the 0.55 volt line. And this low point, we're going to call 0 volts. And this high point, we're going to call 1.1 volts. And this is fed into the uh, ADC. So anything on the low swing and, and at a maximum, it'll return a value of 0 and anything at the high point it will return a value of and we're using 8-bit mode so um, it's only going to return a value of 255 so that gives us a total of 256 values which is 8 bits uh, from the lowest point to the highest point um, we do this uh, we do the 8-bit value by left justifying the uh, ADC so basically there's a there's an ADCH and an ADCL, and these are registers that the value is stored in. Stored in, and typically you would use eight bytes on the L and two bytes on the H, the first two bytes, and this would make up a 10-bit uh, uh, number, which is um, representative of the value. And typically, when you're using the 10-bit mode, it would go up to a thousand and twenty-eight. But um, basically what we've done is we've told it, told it to left justify. So with left justify, and you'll see this in the code, and I tried to make the code as friendly as possible just so everybody could understand it. Um, it uses the uppermost 8 bits here and the lowermost 2 bits here. 
and this is the ADCL and the ADCH. So basically all we have to do is read this ADCH and we get an 8-bit value. Now this is important, we need to actually um, um, we need to actually get this 8-bit value and not use 10 bits because for one we're um, the output is 8 bits as well the PWM output and uh, secondly with the uh, rate of speed that we're actually sampling these devices it probably we probably wouldn't even gain any extra um, uh, accuracy by going to the 10 bit version so uh, basically we're sampling it so fast that um, uh, the accuracy it wouldn't be accurate to 10 bits but uh, according to the data sheet uh, we're looking at um, anywhere from uh, sampling from 200 kilohertz to uh, 1 megahertz max uh, you're going to be in the 8-bit uh, range. In any case um, now we have a PWM uh, value so let's let's check out the PWM we basically set up timer 1 as a counter and the counter counts from 0 to 255 and then it starts back to 0 and it repeats this cycle continuously and it does this for each channel it only it actually only counts one but I set values for uh, each channel so basically we take our ADCH value ADCH and we set this to OCR1A I'm sorry it's the other way around we set OCR1A to ADCH and then we set OCR1B to ADCH when we're sampling the the third channel and we set it to uh, ADCH when we're sampling the first channel this is all in the code uh, I don't need to make it difficult but um, so basically now <clears throat> as the timer counts up let's say this is a uh, OCR1A uh, once it crosses once it crosses this threshold here it will go ahead and turn the signal on and then once it reaches uh, zero it will turn the signal off and this is for each channel and uh, similarly as it's counting up here it meets the signal so it turns it on and off and here on oh, and off and so on and so forth so basically what you have here is now a, a PWM signal and this is output on uh, pins 3 and 6 which is OC1A and OC1B and it's set up to basically do this automatically so it doesn't have to be done in software the only thing that's actually done in software is the setting of this uh, ADCH value the, uh, actually this, the OCR1A value to the ADCH and then the OCR1B value to the ADCH. These are set in software. Uh, the PWM is actually done in hardware which is really good because I've noticed that if you try to do stuff like this in software that um, typically the um, uh, the interrupts will actually lag and your signal will jump all over the place and it create a bunch of fuzz and distortion and uh, it's best to just let the hardware do it, especially with something that's so time critical like this. So basically what you have now is a PWM signal that's proportional to the uh, amplitude of uh, the signal that you're uh, put, putting in. So now if we were to have a signal that was um, uh, no audio, basically a dead signal, then we would end up with a 50 percent uh, duty cycle PWM signal so basically um, uh, typically what you would do in a class D is you would take this 50 percent uh, duty cycle and you'd run it through a high pass filter so this signal is actually at uh, 32.5 kilohertz <coughs> and um, the any class D that you're gonna get uh, commercially is gonna be uh, 200 kilohertz plus so this is actually pretty slow for a, a signal and you can actually hear a little bit of a whining noise inside the speakers and that's probably a result of this uh, frequency being very low now I could uh, I could play around with actually having the uh, Tiny 85 run off of the PLL clock 
which would increase the clock for the um, uh, the timer one up to 64 kilohertz and actually make it um, um, go faster and that might be something that I need to try so it's not going at uh, um, such a low frequency here however do keep in mind though that our sampling rate since we're sampling both channels is stuck at about 37 kilohertz and um, uh, this is because uh, the ADC runs slower. I've read that it takes about 13 and a half, uh, um, uh, 30, uh, 13 and a half ADC cycles, clock cycles, and the ADC clock is actually prescaled from the system clock, which is running at 8 megahertz. So um, I think we have a, a prescaler of 16. So basically, you would take uh, 8 megahertz and divide it by 16, take that number and divide it by um, uh, 13.5 and this is how fast it samples uh, the channels and then you would also divide that by 2 and say that that number is the uh, um, the rate that it samples uh, each channel uh, there's a left and a right so and I think I've determined this to be approximately 37 kilohertz um, and I think I've measured it to be actually a little bit less. I think it's actually more in the 32 kilohertz range because we're switching channels and that takes time as well. So um, so that's uh, pretty much the operation of this amp. And uh, it's not really anything special. It's pretty simple. It compiles uh, under 200 bytes, which is super low. And um, it's stereo, which is kind of neat. Uh, the sound isn't that great. It's... Um, you can, again, you can hear like a kind of a whining in the speaker, and that would probably be eliminated if I were to actually add a filter uh, to the output. But I really don't care about those speakers that I have hooked up to it, and uh, I don't really feel like messing around with the filters right now. So um, it, it is what it is, and it's not that bad. But uh, again, you can buy a commercial product for uh, a lot cheaper with a lot less hassle. But uh, that's not the point. The point of this project is to just, uh, you know, have something that the ADC can, or that the uh, AT Tiny 85 can, you know, do, and it's it's kind of fun fun to play around with. So uh, that's about it.